In this session, we are going to show you a tool we have created to help MSPs show the public their various offerings. We call it the Plans Designer. You will see that it allows MSPs to publish to their website a variety of different plans that take into account everything from their managed virtual desktop offering to Office 365, Azure infrastructure, help desk and support, and any other additional add-ons and services they wish to offer. With just a few clicks, the MSP can format the offerings in their look and feel and quickly publish them to their website. Another example how at Nerdio we are all about helping MSPs be successful in the market. Today we'll be discussing the plans designer that you can find in the Nerdio admin portal or under the settings menu. And the goal of the plans designer is a way to help our MSP partners package together and sort of present in a visual way, potentially on their website, or maybe as a printout, um, an offer that's based on the Azure infrastructure with some managed services wrapped into it. So uh, conceptually, again, what we're trying to create is something that looks like this. So I'm gonna click on the preview, uh, preview button. It's basically going to be an, a nice looking page, basically a, a pricing page that will be broken down into a handful of sections that are configurable and we'll go through that process. Uh, and each of those sections, we can have various components, different plans, different prices, uh, and different features available with, within each one of the plans. Okay, so this is sort of the end result. And what we'll spend our time today is actually going through and creating uh, a sample plans page for a partner. So again, you get to the screen by going into settings and plans designer. Uh, this is unique to a particular uh, partner's account. So you'll see that there is a URL that has a, you know, the white labeled URL that is listed over here. That's going to be uh, what they're going to be publishing on their website or integrated it as an iframe or something like that. Um, I'm actually going to go through and reset all of these sections to their default. So I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here, and I'm going to say revert all changes. Say yes, and then I'm going to click publish. And after I click publish, I'll be able to then click this preview button, and you'll see it changed a little bit. So let's go through the process. So what are the building blocks of the pricing page? So there are uh, one, two, three, four, five components that could be configured on the pricing page. Starting with a virtual, a managed virtual desktop, which is something that the partner would roll all of their managed services into potentially. Um, again, we'll go through it in detail in a minute. Then there is Office 365. Then we have Azure Infrastructure. Then we have help desk and support, and then additional services and add-ons. What you'll notice is most of these sections have an, an on-off button next to them. So for instance, here we have a managed virtual desktop which does not have an on-off button because that's where the managed services piece of the offering goes. However, the Office 365 can be turned off. So if we click this to be off, and we go again to preview our page, you'll notice we no longer have an Office 365 section. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn that back on. Uh, we can also not turn off Azure infrastructure because the two sort of mandatory building blocks are the Azure infrastructure and the managed services offered on top of the Azure infrastructure. But you can turn off help desk and support, you can turn off Office 365, and you can turn on, turn on and off the additional services and add-ons. All right, so let's say we're going to go through and first define what our managed services for virtual desktop is going to look like. Let's say we don't like this name. Instead of calling it managed virtual desktop, uh, you know, we're going to call it, uh, you know, virtual user environments. Okay. I don't know if I spelled that right. I can't spell it. Can type today. Okay, and then if we click off of that page, I misspelled it again, but we'll leave it alone. 
Um, then we have the different sub plans. So you can have anywhere between one and three plans. So you can uncheck the individual ones and it will hide, uh, hide those columns. Let's say we're gonna go with all three, but we're gonna call them what we call uh, you know, NPC plan. So let's call this professional. This one is gonna be performance and enterprise. Okay, then you have the individual line items. When you click on an individual line item, if you click on the name, you can change the name. You can also remove that particular line item completely. So let's say Windows 10 experience becomes a sort of a, a redundant or an obvious thing. So we can just click here, then we can click remove, and that line item is gone. Uh, Multi-monitor support, you can see we have a main line item up here. And then we also have a sub uh, subtext that comes up in, in smaller font underneath it. And then for each of the plans, there is either a checkbox or there is also checkbox with additional uh, text. So you can say, you know, professional, let's, let's remove the up to four monitors. We can say with professional, you get up to, you know, you get two screens. Uh, with performance, you get three screens and with enterprise you get four screens okay uh, now if let's say you wanted the streaming desktop to appear above the multi-monitor you can drag and drop this so now we can change the order pretty easily if you wanted to add a new line item you just say add new feature give it a name a description again mainline text subtext and then check the boxes and provide any optional text next to the box. This is our managed services section. We can then specify our price per month, price per user, price per anything, right? You can basically type in the free text of what the units are and then the actual price and the currency that that price is, um, is gonna be in. All right, let's go down to the Office 365 uh, section. Again, I showed you, you can turn the whole section on and off. If someone doesn't want to be reselling Office 365 or doesn't want to be displaying it in this particular page, they have the option of hiding it. They can obviously change the title of the page. And there are, you know, between one and five selections that you can make. Let's say you're only going to be selling one type of plan. You're going to be selling Enterprise E5 only. Then this is all you would uh, you would do. You cannot uncheck this, right? Because you need at least one. Uh, and then if you go and you preview what that looks like, uh, you'll see the virtual user environments and you have your single option for Office 365. You know, in most cases, it's going to be more than one. So for example, let's say E3, E1, and E5. Uh, and all of this is configurable. The prices are configurable based on what kind of you know, additional services or margin the partner may want to build in. But, you know, these prices here, for instance, are the list prices you would see on the Microsoft's page. Uh, and these features are just, you know, uh, the ones selected that are most relevant based on, on what Microsoft publishes. So we have our E1, which, um, which has 50 gigabyte mailboxes. We have our E3 and E5 has got 100 gig mailboxes, OneDrive, uh, installed office on the desktop is only available in E3 and E5, et cetera. You get the picture. Uh, if you mess up something in any of the sections or in the entire thing, you show me be able to, you saw me be able to do revert all on the entire page, or you can do a revert in a particular section. So let's say I made some changes, you know, I typed in something I shouldn't have, and I don't remember the original value. You can just click revert and that should put everything back to the way it was initially. Let's move on to the infrastructure. Same story here, between one and five plans, and they can be renamed the way that uh, the partner sees fit. So they have the option of renaming both the section as well as individual plans, and you can select between one and three. Now, if you have a partner that's only gonna be selling to smaller accounts, maybe they don't wanna show enterprise, if they want to be selling only larger accounts and not the professional accounts, they may want to display only enterprise or a mix, uh, a mix of the two. So if we select enterprise, 
Um, and let's let's select one of these just as an example. So you, you're selling one of two versions. You, a customer can either subscribe to a very tiny infrastructure that's going to have a fixed cost associated with it right there, or it can have a flexible enterprise type infrastructure, which will not have a fixed cost. It will have a starting at price plus a button to actually do a more accurate estimate. Uh, and again, all of these options here are configurable. So let's just go through a few of them. So, you know, this is going to be a DAS enabled Azure subscription. It's going to have a, an uptime of, you know, whatever the uptime is. Let's say this is 99.95. Uh, it's going to have this amount of shared storage. This one is going to be starting at 128 SSD. This one is 512 spinning media, self-service portal, in-region backup, and then all of these other features are only available under the enterprise plan um, because that's what the you know, partner decided to select. And that's because it sort of aligns with how Nerdio for Azure is packaged as well, but it doesn't have to align. They could decide to create their own variations and their, add their own items into this list. Okay. Uh, now, what, the, what you also have is this uh, line item where you can add an additional infrastructure management fee. So, for instance, you know, here you're going to charge an additional $75 a month for managing of the infrastructure. And here you're going to charge an additional, I don't know, let's call it $250 per month to manage the infrastructure. So if someone is selling Azure at cost, or at least at the list price of Azure, they can actually uh, you know, add a management fee on top of that infrastructure from right here. So let's go ahead and preview. And you'll see that we have our virtual user environment, we have our Office 365, and now we have our two plans for Azure infrastructure. Here's our one plan that doesn't have any of these features, but does have you know, a, a management, uh, uh, infrastructure management fee of 250. And this one has a starting price and an estimate price button. If you click here, it asks for some, you know, basic information, you know, like how many users, uh, what is going to be the total amount of shared data, are there going to be any additional applications or database servers, what the type of uh, uh, commitment the customer wants to make, and what location the data center is going to be in. In theory, what would happen after you click the confirm button, it would update this price to be starting at reflective of what changes were configured uh, on this screen right here. Okay, let's keep going down the line. Then we have our um, help desk and support. Again, an optional section. This is a way for an MSP to also put their support packages on that same page. Everything is configurable as before. The title of the section, the name of each plan, ability to select between one and three, and then the various features, including the price. So as you can see, this is similar to how NPC support works. Uh, by the way, these buttons up here are clickable. So if we click down here, it takes us right to that section. And, uh, and here is what we saw on the previous screen. And then finally, the last section, which is also optional, are additional services. And this could be anything from, you know, one-time migration services, virtual CIO, individual licenses, things like SQL Server, uh, DLP and activity monitoring. It could be uh, UCAS or, you know, uh, voice over IP type services, really anything else the partner sees as complementary to selling managed desktops on top of Azure with Office 365 and, and support. Like this would be another way, uh, another section where, where they can add uh, various features. If we click here, you can see that um, there aren't plans or there aren't ad individual additions because this is just a way of just listing multiple things uh, in these little boxes. So if we go to preview, and look at this section on the bottom, you'll see just it just lists them in boxes like this. And they can either have a price or they can have a button for contact us. Okay. All right. Then all the way on the bottom here is a little bit of customization that's available. So you can customize 
the, the page title. So this would be the page title up here. Oops. Right, so this page title is customizable. You can customize uh, the title color. You can also customize this intro text that sits up here. You can customize any text that goes in the footer. So if you go to you know, this section down here, you can put text into this blue footer down there. Uh, you can also select an image, right? So this image right here is the one that you see at the top of the page. So this could be replaced. Uh, you can upload the file or point it into a, uh, a URL. And then there is a button at the bottom where you can either have a button or have no button. So if we do no button, then the page will basically end like this. There will not be a footer. Uh, if you do enable a button, then it lets you then capture that lead, tell it what the button says and where it sends the user and whether it opens in a new browser window or not. So, so if we take a look at it with the button, right? So if they click on start your trial today, that will open up a particular page, taking them directly to some sort of a form that the partner would have on their website that they could send customers to.